What's up guys? So today we're going to be rebuilding this computer right here. Um, oh great, another time lapse build. It's not like he hasn't done enough of these. What? No, it's going to be more of a step-by-step -step learning process kind of. Oh, so you're going to talk through the whole thing. That's even oh better. Oh my god, shut the f So this build was originally a workstation for somebody. Um, I ended up building them a new computer and they gave me this to help mitigate the labor cost. So um, on its own, it probably wouldn't fetch very much on the used market, maybe two or three hundred dollars, um, but it can be repurposed and given a second life, which is what I intend to do today. So um, inside this computer is a 4790 Intel processor and a 750 Ti. Now people who no, and who've tried to game on a 750 Ti, there's not very much it can handle. Um, and this case is kind of dated, not to mention dirty. I'm guessing the power supply probably isn't hefty enough on its own to deal with a higher tier graphics card. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling out all the components of this computer, seeing what we can incorporate into a new build, cleaning them, and then adding the new components for what will need to be replaced. So this is going to be more of a how-to video on whether you're just cleaning your computer, whether you're updating your existing computer, or whether you would like to try and find a used deal, like a good deal on a used computer and refurbish it, and uh, flip it for money too. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this case open. We're gonna see kind of the condition of the parts, and we're gonna unplug the power supply cables from everything. We're gonna start to remove components individually and clean them. So before we get too far into it, um, you'll need some good Thermal paste, I like uh, the stuff from Thermal Grizzly. It's pretty good for conducting heat. Um, you'll need a small cross point or Phillips head screwdriver. You will need some isopropyl alcohol. It doesn't matter if it's 70% or if it's 99%. Honestly, it does the job just the same either way. And you will need some paper towels, shop towels, uh, something to that effect for cleaning off dirty components and for removing the thermal paste from the CPU. So let's get into it. Um, this case I have no experience with. It's pretty old. This build was originally done in, I believe, 2013. So we're gonna take off this side window here and that should give us access to most of the components inside. Um, just has some non-captive thumb screws there. Panel slides off, pretty basic. But here's something automatically to note. Um, there's a giant 200 millimeter fan on the side of the case panel. So if I just pulled that off, I could have ripped cables out. And my God, the cable management on this is something else. I'm gonna say cable management, I mean lack thereof. There's just a bird's nest in here. So I guess it's probably a good thing that I replaced this PC when I did. This is not looking too good. Okay, so right here we have the graphics card. There's the uh, thermal tape power supply right here. Uh, I'm trying to see how many watts this is. It is an 850 watt power supply. Wow, so this actually probably could be reincorporated into the new build. Um, but with how old it is and the fact that this is run nonstop pretty much for about five years now, um, we're just going to go ahead and use our new EVGA power supply. So the first thing I'm gonna do, um, I'm going to just unplug everything that I can. So anything that doesn't need to be in there. Uh, let's remove this graphics card to give us a little bit more room to work. So that doesn't need to be in there. And there's only one screw holding it in. All right, so we got that. Try to push these cables out of the way. Get to the latch, you just push in that tab that's at the back of the graphics card and wiggle it out. And we have a, wow, this one, this is actually kind of nice. So it has dual HDMI and uh, dual DVI output ports. Um, a dual fan Gigabyte WinForce card. For this being a 750 Ti, honestly, it's pretty nice, but you can see um, with this not being opened, 
in a couple of years you can see all the dust and dirt accumulation on the fans this is why it's important to clean out your case um, I'd say probably yearly maybe six months if you live in a kind of dirty environment if it's dusty um, this case doesn't have very great filtration from what I can see there's no filter on that 200 millimeter fan so that's just that whole side panel is vented and it's just bringing in all this dust and debris straight onto the motherboard so um, it's not an awesome design. All these fans are Molex, wow. Really takes you back to static speed Molex fans. That's crazy. You really don't see these anymore. Um, these aren't really, I don't believe they're really being produced like this anymore. Um, from what I've seen, everything is either three pin DC or uh, four pin uh, PWM. So now we're disconnecting the bottom USB headers and rear panel audio, the front IO for the case, all of that, just kind of been plugging it. None of this stuff really needs to be plugged in. Uh, we're gonna be actually unplugging everything. So, okay, there's USB 3 on here, that's nice. Let's take off these SATA cables. That one didn't even have a tab on it, that's crazy. Didn't have the uh, metal tab how many drives are in this thing so far i've counted four SATA cables connected to this which is pretty wild that's a whole lot of SATA going on okay so let's see here this top two are exhaust that's exhaust and we just had the one big fan for intake okay so uh most drive cages it just has the little side tabs you just push in and you slide it out if you can um, I feel like these are cable managed where there's tension on this cable, so we'll probably have to attack it from the other side. So, um, like most cases, again, it has the two, oh man, thumb screws that are very well secured on there. So just use your screwdriver and go ahead and pull, or uh, I should say, unscrew these two thumb screws on the side here. And just like the front panel, will just slide and pop off. Now every case is different, so if your case doesn't, um, if your case panels don't come off like that, you know, don't hold me accountable for that because every case is different. Wow, look at the, whoops. Look at the dust on this, that is insane. I've never seen dust accumulation like this on a case before. I don't know how well you can see how dusty it is, but my God, that is bad. That is probably the dirtiest case I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to take a picture of that real quick. That's amazing. Wow. Okay, so uh, back here you can kind of see we have access to the drives. We're gonna go ahead and undo the data cable and unplug the, sour, uh, the SATA power connectors, the sour cables, the SATA power connectors. So this way, with that being freed up, uh, we should be able to pull these drives out from the front now. And just for the sake of saving space, let's go ahead and put these panels somewhere else up on the chair next to me. Okay, so we flip it around, and these drives should just slide out. So that is a two terabyte Seagate drive. And here we have another terabyte or two terabytes to get drive. Uh, I believe they were running in RAID 1 because this was a workstation and the information on there was pretty important. So over here we're gonna undo the 24 pin ATX cable. That is the easiest an ATX cable has ever come out for me, ever, so that was awesome. And next, we should be able to pull out this power supply without having to undo any cables from the power supply itself, hopefully. So let's take these four screws out. And if at any point I'm working too fast, um, feel free to pause the video and review kind of what we've done. But so far we're just disassembling everything, undoing all the connectors so we can get the parts out. And then we'll be cleaning everything for reassembly into our new case, um, whether you use a new case or an old case, 
doesn't really matter. It's all fundamentally the same. So here's our power supply. We're getting hung up on some of these cables here. There's just a lot going on. There's just tons going on. Oh man, look at the dirt accumulation on the power supply. Oh my God. I am really impressed that it has lasted this long in this condition. Because this is a record breaking, dirtiest PC I have encountered to date. Oh, there's an optical drive in there. That's not something you really see anymore either. Most people don't have disk drives. So, because everything's so widely available on the internet, most people just prefer to download things rather than install from a disk. Okay, so down here we got a little Samsung SSD. Go ahead and plug that. Get this SATA cable back through. Um, and definitely, if you feel any tension on any of the cables when you give them a, just a light tug, uh, don't pull on them super hard because that is how you break things and you might end up damaging something that you intended to reuse. Okay, so there's our thermal take power supply out. Um, now we are left with the motherboard and the CPU. None of these fans will be reused, so none of that really matters. Okay, so here's the motherboard. And our CPU, our RAM and everything is in here. So we're gonna go ahead and just take out these screws so we can pop out our motherboard. Get this case fan header out of the way. Okay, so what all is plugged into the motherboard? Well, we have our stock Intel CPU cooler. Okay, we have this Molex connector for the fan. Go ahead and get that out of the way. Anything else plugged into the motherboard? This is very critical to make sure that there's nothing else plugged into the motherboard, no fan headers or anything. Uh, it seems like all of these fans are Molex, which is driven off of the power supply. So that is not something we have to worry about. So we're gonna go ahead and take out these motherboard screws. This is an ATX case and an ATX motherboard, so I believe there should be about nine, if I'm not mistaken. Again, this is an older board, so it might be a little bit different. So there's two. I wanna say there should be another one. There's just two down there, okay. Two, and we have three. So yeah, definitely, um, I mean, when you clean, you don't have to go this extensive. Um, if you clean routinely enough, usually you can just take a can of compressed air and spray out your components while everything is still installed. Clean out your dust filters. If you have a case with good filtration, you won't even really have to clean out the inside too much. Just make sure your filters stay clean so they don't get clogged and block airflow. Um, one, two, three. There should be one up top. But since I'm doing a full case swap and essentially rebuilding this, um, I figured this would be a very good opportunity to completely disassemble everything and clean it all. There's one more right here. I feel like standard ATX motherboards have more screws than this, but I could be wrong. I have been wrong before. So that doesn't sound good. Why is it doing that? Okay. And a magnetic screwdriver would definitely save your ass when you were dealing with motherboard screws or really anything like that. So uh, the motherboard is effectively not attached to the case anymore. Nothing is attached to the motherboard. So we just go ahead, pop that bad boy out. And that is what we are left with. So the case fan, the case, um, anything else in here is not gonna be of any importance to us anymore. Um, so we are just gonna, whoops, leave this off to the side here. And that is probably gonna go in the dumpster. Okay, so that SSD that was down there um, is attached from the underside of the case with four tiny little screws. Whoops. Make sure the magnet in your screwdriver is worth a damn. 
Otherwise, there's really no point. Oop. Two for two. Maybe I can take one out without dropping it. Maybe my cat won't eat. Moose, get out of here. Please don't eat the hardware. All right, hey, I got one. Looks like one of the standoffs came out too. Interesting. Hopefully with the new case, we won't need standoffs. Hopefully they will come pre-installed. I absolutely despise it when case manufacturers make you install your own, because that is just wasted time. Okay, and here's our Samsung 840 Pro, uh, which was absolutely the bee's knees back in the day, and will probably still post up some good benchmarks today. Um, 250 gig, or two, 256 gigabyte, uh, boot drive two and a half inch so that would be nice to have for our new build so here are all of our components that we'll be recycling um, this isn't going in the new build but I will clean it up I will bench it and check temps and uh, post it up online if somebody's interested in grabbing that um, if even just for display output I mean it would work fine so we have our two two terabyte drives we have our 256 gigabyte SSD we have the motherboard, we have the stock Intel cooler, which is getting replaced, and we have the GPU. So all of these things um, I will clean. I will show you how to clean them properly. And um, I'm actually just gonna give this a good blowout with some compressed air. Um, but we do have the replacement GPU, which I picked up used, uh, so that I will disassemble and repaste and show you how to clean that out properly because the heat sink on the new one is still pretty dirty. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the, uh, the drives here. These are the easiest thing to clean off. So you just wanna rip off one sheet of your paper towels. And if you can get them in half sheet increments, that makes it even easier because honestly, this is a bit too much material. You really don't need this much. Uh, I folded it in the quarters just to make it a little more manageable. So you take your isopropyl alcohol and oops, just get the corner of that. And then essentially just wipe it off. Just make sure there's no dust on it or get most of the dust off. Um, this could help with temperatures and if anything, just make it look nicer so you're not putting dirty old gross parts into your new build. Um, wipe off the contacts or the SATA power and the SATA data cable plug-in. Um, be, be careful and make sure there's no fibers from what you're using left on here. Um, so I, I like shop towels because they don't tear as easy. They don't leave fibers as easy as regular paper towels do. But there's nothing wrong with regular paper towels, just be mindful of what you're doing. So, I'd say that's a pretty clean drive. No evidence of dust or anything on there. Looks pretty new to me. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the SSD. Again, just wipe the surface down. And if your material, your paper towel, whatever you're using, is starting to get kind of dirty in one corner, um, Obviously, just switch corners. When you're out of corners, just fold it and reapply some more alcohol to it. Is really as long as the surface of what you're using to wipe with is clean, then it should be fine. So I'm just gonna run along the surface, get the edges. I already got the contacts. And this one has kind of a like a polished bevel to it, which I think that looks really awesome. I don't know why Samsung stopped doing that. I think it looks really cool. It gives it kind of a premium feel. So that guy's clean. We're gonna move over to this last hard drive here. And this is by, by far the easiest part to clean. You're essentially just wiping off the surface. You don't have to worry about PCB material or getting fibers stuck in SMDs on the PCB or anything like that. There's really not anything to worry about here. Pretty simple. There's, I guess it's kind of like a PCB type deal on the back of this. 
I don't know if that's the controller or what, but um, it's flat. It doesn't have any SMDs. So if there's dust in there, feel free to get your compressed air and if there's anything in there, just blow it out. Just like that. It's that easy. Um, this drive looks pretty good to me. And especially since I'm building this computer for somebody else, if you're doing that, um, absolutely just give everything a good double check. Because there's nothing worse than handing off a computer to somebody else and then having them take it apart later on down the line and find something you missed. That would be terrible. All right, so the next probably <coughs> second most difficult thing to clean would be the motherboard. So here, we're going to pull the cooler off because that'll be getting replaced. Um, <coughs> with the fourth gen Intel socket, it has these weird um, kind of pegs that hook into the motherboard. So you have to turn these and then they pop out. Were these not even secured in the first place? Okay, so this is a five-year-old computer. I really hope the CPU is not still attached. That would suck. So it feels like it's still being held in there. There we go, okay, so you just have to pull through a little bit. I really hope that CPU is still on the motherboard. Yes, all right. Wow, there's really not that much thermal compound on there. So, cool, okay, well, um, we won't worry about cleaning the stock Intel cooler because that will never, ever, ever be used by anything from me. That will be going straight in the garbage or being used as an office decoration because that is all they are good for. So with cleaning off the CPU, all you want to do is get some of that alcohol on there and then make small circular motions on top of the IHS, on top of the surface of the CPU, and you can see you're pulling off all the thermal paste. So after you've done that initial circular motions, you go back without alcohol, go over it again, and that should pull the rest of it off of there. Looking pretty clean. Um, for this, I'm not gonna pull the CPU out of the socket because that is just unnecessary. We're not replacing it, we're using the same motherboard. So I'm just gonna try and clean this locking mechanism as best I can. I will move the locking mechanism arm though. And clean that off. There's a lot of tension on that. Okay, so that's clean. So for cleaning the rest of the motherboard, um, use your compressed air. Make sure to try and keep it upright as much as possible. Don't tilt it, um, it won't work as well. So right here you can see there's a whole bunch of dirt in this uh, PCI slot. So by using that compressed air that gets all of it out of there, Kind of just go over the entire board. The I.O. I find usually gets pretty bad, the rear I.O. does. Getting all the cracks and crevices. That's where the dirt is gonna hide the most. And move the board around different angles. You can see as I was getting in between the RAM modules, uh, a fair amount of dust came out. These latches are dirty. These heat sinks have a fair amount of dust in them. Get all those SATA ports, it's your 24 pin ATX.
And as you can feel, uh, your compressed air bottle get cold. You kind of need to give it a break. It'll not work as well for a short period of time. But this board overall looks really good now. I wouldn't say it looks new, but it's definitely not dirty. And to my surprise, this board actually supports M.2. I think that's really cool for how old this board is with it being a fourth gen Intel board. Um, that's, that's pretty neat. And it's gigabyte as well, which has not been known to be like super premium. Um, but yeah, once you've gotten all that off of there, continue to use that same piece of fiber and you're just going to want to wipe off the surfaces of things. So like I'm going to get the RAM modules because there's some dirt that doesn't just get blown off too well. It's always good to just wipe the surface down and make sure you didn't miss anything. Let's get the top of these PCI slots. In the rear I.O. I find the top of these I.O. ports, the USB ports, etc. get really dirty. Um, so yeah, I would say the board and the CPU are good now. Uh, now it's time to take our GPU apart. So this is what I would say is probably the most intricate part of the entire cleaning process. Um, with having to take this apart and be really careful with the components in there. This actually has a custom back plate. Um, it looks like painted acrylic or maybe just black acrylic held on there by 3M pads. Some 3M sticky pads. So we're going to pop this off. Hopefully I can reuse its pads. They seem to be working pretty well. And honestly, that is a really nice uh, custom backplate there. Is that just regular tape? That's not good. Okay, so we have our backplate off, which this card would not have come with originally. I'm gonna try and pull this tape off this backplate right here. Cause that is something I don't want on there. Cause that can melt and things can get really bad. Because graphics cards can get up to 60, 70, maybe even 80 Celsius, um, especially if you don't set a fan curve. And that translates to 150 plus degrees Fahrenheit. And that is hot enough to melt some stuff. So we are gonna take this card apart completely. And every card is different. So be sure um, to watch a teardown of your specific card in case you were unsure. And this screwdriver is actually too big. So I will be right back and I'm going to get a smaller cross point. Okay, so here I have my ratcheting um, adjustable screwdriver. It has interchangeable bits. It's very nice. The only thing I don't like about ratcheting screwdrivers is the plate it has in the head or the ratchet gears that can be kind of annoying. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by taking off the four screws in the center. Um, and this usually attaches the cooler to the PCB. These little spring-loaded screws right here. And they should come right out if you have the right size screwdriver. If you notice the tip of your screwdriver spinning inside the grooves for the screw, then it is too big or too small. You could round out the inside of the screw or strip it out. And that would be terrible. So don't try to make it work. If you don't have the right size, then get the right size. If you use the wrong tools for the job, it won't go well and you will end up making more problems for yourself. So, I think we got lucky here and that's really all that was holding this card together. Yep. Okay, so, let's see what's going on here. Okay, so we have a fan header over here. It needs to come out ever so carefully. Hold on, by anything, okay. So we just have this fan header right here that's holding everything together. So if we just carefully pinch that and wiggle it out, it pops right out. So here we have the PCB and the GPU die right there, the VRMs, um, the power input for it. So yeah, we're going to give this a good cleaning. 
Um, I don't want to take this plate off because there's almost no chance that there's going to be any dust under there. And then we have to redo thermal pads and things like that. Um, that won't be very fun. So I'm just going to clean this how it is. That's really all you should have to do. You should, really shouldn't have to get too, too much more intimate than that. That should work just fine. So again, apply some alcohol and get that old paste off of there. And this is a 9 series card, so it's been around for a minute. It's, it's seen some stuff and done some work. So it's not a bad idea to go ahead and clean it out. Honestly, I probably would have left it alone had I not seen how dirty the heat sink was. As you can see, dust is just flying off of this thing. It's had some use in its days. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with getting a used GPU. I use them all the time. Probably don't use the same side that had the thermal paste on it. Otherwise you'll just smear used thermal paste all over your card like I just did. So let's clean that off. Get in there, get on top of the power output or inputs. Get by the fan header. Just wipe all this stuff off as best you can. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, now for the cooler. The cooler is, whoops, big piece of fiber in there. Probably go ahead and just give it a once over with the, with the air when you're done wiping it down just to make sure that there's no more fibers in there. Okay. So if you get fibers stuck in your card, that can be very bad. Because graphics cards get very hot and small fibers are very flammable. So you can see why that combination would be less than ideal. Also, you can tell if the paste is super hard when you go to scrape it off and it comes off in chunks, then it was probably time to replace that thermal paste anyways. So you can see a horrendous amount of dirt and grime in this cooler. Maybe you can't Let's turn on autofocus. Maybe you can see exactly how dirty it is. It's definitely less than ideal. There's a whole bunch right here. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely a good idea to pull that cooler off and, oh, let's fix that autofocus. And freeze, okay. So yeah, it's definitely a good idea to pull that heat sink off. Oof. And do this in an open area and not right next to your face. So I just got a mouthful of dirt and GPU dirt doesn't taste very good. Oh my God. I'm almost wondering if I should have benched it before I took it apart. Oof, see what temps hit. Oh my god. <coughs> mm. Oh no, our can of air is losing power. Oh, it's a good thing that it was pretty much done, pretty much done cleaning stuff by the time it's gotten to that point. We got lucky. Just trying to spread out this fan area.
So that is exponentially better than it was. I'm gonna get a new shop towel here and try and scrub that contact plate, the cold plate on this heat sink a little bit better. There's, I wouldn't say it was thermal paste, I don't know really what that is on there, but it's not just regular copper, so I want it off. I want this scrubbed as clean as I can get it, because it will not be coming off for a long, long time. And since I'm selling this build to a close friend, I know it will be me who has to reclean it. And I don't want to do that. Because that is not something I make very much money off of. So. And obviously, clean the outside of the heat sink as well. Clean that shroud, the fan shroud, really well. Get all of the fan blades, wipe all of that down. Usually you can just get that with compressed air well enough, but our can of air is now out. Seems I did not have quite enough. So we'll just go ahead and get, get these fans as clean as we can with this cloth. And also, just a word of advice, if you do have a fan blade or something broken, the worst thing you could do is let that just stay there without fixing it, because an unbalanced fan will destroy itself. So if you have an issue with your fan, if it's missing a fan blade, just get it replaced. Most GPU fan blade replacements, or like for the whole unit um, for that fan, it's like 5 to $10. And that's better than having your GPU overheat because your fan stopped spinning because it destroyed itself. So that cold plate looks really good. Let me go ahead and a dry cloth and make sure it's completely dry. Okay, so let's bring this PCB back over here. And GPUs can be kind of tricky to repaste sometimes. If you use not enough paste, it'll run too hot. If you use too much paste, it'll run too hot. They're kind of fickle. So how do you know what the right amount of paste is? Well, you don't really. You just kind of have to trust your instincts, which is not helpful whatsoever. Um, I usually go with the P method on this. So we have a cooler there have our card here. I'm just going to put a dab right in the middle. Boom. Right about that much. And I'm going to stare at it for a minute and second guess myself. But whatever, if temps are bad, I will just go ahead and repaste it because this card was probably the easiest one I've ever taken apart. There was I was expecting so much more work than that. Oops, took that back plate off there. Um, this card has been very, very easy to deal with, which is a relief because taking apart GPUs can be a nightmare. There's two of my screws, but they're oh, there. You always keep track of your screws. Uh, I recommend using a very small Tupperware to keep all of your important screws in. Usually each screw has a specific purpose and they're all different types, so it's kind of hard to mix them up. I guess if you're new at PC building, you probably won't know what each one is for. But you learn to tell the differences after you've done a couple builds. It's pretty easy. Oh, man. Okay. The trick here, I guess, is to plug this fan header in without putting the entire cooler on. Okay, fan header is... Secured. Now we're just going to fold this down on top of it and hope we get it right the first time. Which is kind of hard to tell. Okay. That felt good. That felt like it went on how it was supposed to. Everything looks like it's lined up. Okay, so the back PCB is still pretty dang dirty. So we're going to go ahead and put these screws back in and hopefully our compressed air has found a second life so we can 
cleaning this PCB off because the PCB on a GPU, or really anything I guess for that matter, is special. You can't just wipe it off. And that is because all these SMDs, uh, surface mounted devices, all these little capacitors and every little contact that's on here, um, whether you're using a paper towel or whatever else to wipe it down with, um, it will snag on those and you will get little fibers all over this thing and like I said with it getting as hot as it does that is not ideal something bad could happen I don't know what the likelihood of that being is but I don't want to be the guy to find out so hopefully our compressed air works okay so we got those four little screws back on our GPU is back together Okay, so that helped a little bit, didn't really do a ton. So here's the best approach if you absolutely have to use um, a paper towel or whatever you're using. If you absolutely have to, if your compressed air is completely out, then clean tiny little portions at a time. Kind of dab around things that stick out. Just be very, very light and gentle. And you shouldn't really have anything grab. Just kind of dab components that stick out a lot or are clustered close together. And that should pick up any dirt that is on here. And it kind of minimizes your risk for damaging components. So I'm just getting the, the key spots here where I see the most dirt and where I see is easiest to clean. Okay, so that looks pretty clean. There's no real dirt buildup on there. There's probably just a little bit on there, but it's not anything that will be noticeable at all. So we're gonna take our <laughs> awesome little Jerry rig back plate here. Go ahead and reattach that. Line that up as best I can. Oops. And hats off to this eBay seller for doing this. It looks really good, honestly, for just a piece of acrylic. Oh, minus this. What the hell is going on here? It's not positioned very well at all. That needs to move. Oh, no. But that part is stuck on there. Damn. Okay, so this will have to go in this corner then. And hopefully it won't be too visible. Okay, so we position our back plate and secure it on there. I really don't like how it sticks out, but I tried to move the pad and it didn't look very good. Let's get that positioned a little closer. Okay, so the pad is on there. We have our back plate. We have a nice new clean graphics card ready to do some work. Our storage is clean, our motherboard and our CPU, everything else is clean. So let's go ahead and install this stuff in the new case. So here we have the Antec D500 case. Um, it's a full size ATX case with tempered glass. Um, honestly, this build was built mostly with budget in mind. So I only spent $50 on this case. So hopefully that should give us all the modern niceties that we need for this build while also trying to keep the um, price point low. So uh, let's go ahead and unbox it and kind of see what we're working with here because I've never dealt with Antec before. So.
this already is a very interesting case. Um, the front panel looks kind of cool. I really like the way they have this um, acrylic vent. And there's ventilation here on the sides. Uh, there's probably about an inch to an inch and a half gap in between where the fans mount and in between the acrylic here. Um, the acrylic side panel is interesting. It mounts on as if it would be tempered glass. So I don't know if there's some kind of tempered glass replacement for this, um, but it is just a sheet of acrylic essentially that fits over the side of like tempered glass wood. And then you have the four thumb screws that hold it in. Um, the case does feel kind of cheap. It doesn't really flex or anything. It's, it's sturdy. Um, it has a dust filter here on the top that is removable. And interestingly enough, the dust filter that is here on the front um, is magnetic, but it doesn't go in behind the front panel. Like the front panel doesn't seem to be removable. The front panel um, dust filter is here and it goes in uh, just behind the fans. It just attaches where, where the fans are. Or maybe you have to bolt the fans in over that. Um, there's a nice gap here that allows for you to do push-pull if you put a radiator there in front, which is nice. Um, it seems like there's a really good amount of room uh, depth-wise, so you can mount a pretty big air cooler in there if you wanted to. Um, I also like that there's top 360 support and front 360 support. I think that should be a thing that pretty much all ATXs, all ATX cases conform to. Um, there's a cutout right here for front USB and I.O. Cable management, there's no grommets, um, but there's cutouts for them. And it does have front USB, front USB 3. Um, as far as the back, the back of this case looks like it's not going to be super fun to deal with. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of clearance back there. Um, these rear thumb screws are plastic. That's kind of off-putting. I mean, it doesn't really affect anything, but just that their plastic is weird. <laughs> um, so that's how it's not. Yeah, there's really not a whole lot of room back here, so you have to be really good with cable management. So, you give us one 120mm fan. We have our front panel audio, our USB 3, and then down here we have a drive cage for Two, two, three and a half inch drives. <laughs> their case though, they managed to put holes in for their drive caddy, which is kind of funny. So in here, um, I'm guessing you need, you, you get all the little odds and ends you'll need for the case. Um, and back here, it does have a dust filter that just kind of sits in there for the power supply. So that's nice that they thought of that. Um, yeah, otherwise this case is just super basic. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot to it. Um, it seems like $50 worth of case, so without further ado, let's get building it. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is remove this rear exhaust fan because we won't be needing this. We're going to be putting in our own fans. So, man, if I can just hold the screwdriver in there. There's four of these little screws that are holding it in. Fan's not plugged into anything, it doesn't have any kind of fan controller on the case. So you just unscrew these four and it'll pop right out. And out it goes. And check it out, the motherboard standoffs are pre-installed. See that fractal Josh? So with me being so accustomed to building AMD systems, um, I forgot that some of these older Intel systems don't have the same mounting system. Uh, they just have these little push pins that push into the motherboard. Okay, so we need this base plate right here, and this, oh, I'm sorry if you can't see. Okay, so we need it like that to get the cooler going that way. So I'm gonna place it on here, 
Again, sorry if you can't see this part, I'm just positioning the bracket. When I go to actually attach the cooler, I will move the camera. Actually, I changed my mind. For the sake of this not being a completely garbage video, I figured I would let you guys see what I'm doing. So I'm just trying to position these pins right here into the motherboard socket. God dang it, I can't see what I'm doing now. God dang it, okay. So come over here and it's not anywhere close. So trying to position these into the actual socket is really not super easy. Okay, well, after lining that up again, I have both sides protruding through the motherboard. There we go. My God. That is really smashing it in there. I feel bad for the next person who has to pull this cooler off. That is not going to be a fun time. Okay, so the cooler is in place. The bracket is. It's absolutely not going anywhere. So let's move to the actual cooler and get rid of that paste. So here we have our CPU cooler and um, I have this undone. Usually it's wrapped up all in the base here. Um, to remove the fan, just pinch and pull. Oops. Bring that cable with it. So on this, I'm going to go ahead and replace that thermal pad right there. It's not really a pad, it's more of a paste, but so we're going to go ahead and get rid of that and put some of our own stuff on the CPU because we don't want to use this garbage. I've never used factory paste from a cooler and I have it in well. Okay, so now um, the fan is out, so we have access to these screw holes. So we're going to go ahead and position this where it needs to be on the CPU. I'm going to screw it into the bracket and then we're going to install the fan in here. Um, it sounds like a lot, but it should only take a second. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to put down a blob of paste on the CPU. Just a piece size. That ought to do it. Then we take our cooler and the included screws for it and our screwdriver. So I'm going to come over here and we are just going to install this cooler right on top of here. Try and line up that cold plate with the CPU as best you can. So you don't smear it around a whole bunch, which may have just happened. It's so hard, dude. I can't. I can't really see anything that I'm doing. Um, I wish I had my little desk lamp out here. I'm going to use this to line up the screw holes. This isn't even working too well, honestly. Wow, this is not a great situation. Okay, so I can see that, that screw hole is lined up perfectly. Moving around, I finally got the cooler installed. The screw holes did not line up very well. So when installing your CPU fan, um, this is the front, obviously. This is the back. The back always has the um, manufacturer sticker on it. And you can see the fan frame as well. Um, so that is going to be where the exhaust is facing. This is going to be the intake. So we are going to make sure our fan has the cable threaded through and make sure the front of the fan is facing the front of the case. Push 
those tabs in, slide it down in there. And we're going to make sure that it gets plugged into the CPU fan header. And kind of tuck this cable back under here a little bit. All right, cable's tucked away and cooler's installed. Fan is installed, everything's plugged in. So now we can finally install our motherboard standoffs. So let's go ahead and do that now. Our standoffs are here under the instruction board, or the instruction paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this from the other side. Oops. Okay, so for this, um, I finished installing the motherboard screws um, and getting that mounted so that's in there. And this front panel just pops off like any normal front panel, so you don't have to like remove the the uh, acrylic here, the acrylic front panel or anything, the whole panel pops off. Um, here's the dust filter, which is just magnetic, and you kind of have to screw it in between the fans and the frame. So that's not great, but it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So for this, we're gonna have to screw it in from the back. Um, I got the IGO C5 fans, they have their own little fan controller. I'm disappointed it doesn't come with an, uh, a remote to control it. It only has the actual LED controller. So you'd have to pop the back panel off every time you wanted to change colors or modes or anything. Which kind of sucks. These baggies are impossible to open, my god. Okay. So we got the four little fan screws. So you have that in there, but it slides around. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and install the rest of these. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just hold the fan in place, get some of the screws in back, and then you're gonna feed the cables through the front, through right here. Just like that. So just for the sake of video length, I've gone ahead and installed the front panel fans and I have the um, SSD mounted. There's just four motherboard screws, um, two on each side, and then it just mounts onto the case. Just kind of slides in there. Just like that, and then it has one thumb screw. And you put the thumb screw on there. part I had the audio off so I just went ahead and time-lapsed it um, all I was saying is that when you plug your cables in your power supply you will feel it connect all the way in and you should hear an audible click um, for this we're using motherboard 
the eight pin EPS. Uh, we have two SATA cables because our drives are kind of far apart with our SSD being over here and our HDD being in the bay. And then we have our Molex for the um, fan controller. And we have our Y cable for the VGA for our graphics card. So, <laughs> sorry for not having the audio going. Installing the power supply is extremely straightforward. Um, some cases have a bracket that you will take off with thumb screws. Um, this one obviously doesn't. It just has a little plate. So what you will do is take your PSU with all of its cables. Move all the cables out. Slide the power supply in. Like so. Oh my god, we have like no room. Oh, this is gonna be tricky. Ooh, very small basement. Power supply is not even that big. Wow. Oh my god, is this even gonna fit? So, carrying a very snug fit there. I don't know why it's so jammed in there like that. This is an ATX case, there should be more than enough room. But apparently there's not. Okay, so there's four screws here on the back. You just line up with. And, oops. Um, these screws will kind of had a like hex outline. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, it's kind of like a six point bevel around them. And you just take those and put it in the slot. And screw it in. Um, I recommend not tightening those down all the way because most of the time you will have to wiggle them around to get them positioned where they need to be. Cable management is going to be an absolute nightmare. There is no room to work in this case. Okay, and when you have two of the screws in, that pretty much lines everything up. So when you have two of them in, you should be able to put the rest in and tighten them down. Okay, so the rest is pretty self-explanatory. Just feed the cables through where they go, connect them where they're supposed to go, and then cable manage. Um, when I have everything together, I'll kind of touch on that a little bit more, but I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that.
Okay, so at the end of the build, I kind of sat down with the PC and talked a little bit about it. But of course, what would the build be if everything went smoothly? Of course, the audio was off while I was talking the whole time. So now here I am at my desk. Uh, <laughs> during editing after the fact, I noticed that the audio was off. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the build. Um, it obviously, like I said in the beginning of the video, it had a 4790 um, Intel CPU in it, fourth gen. Um, and I put a GTX 970 in it. I, it was an EVGA, I think, SC2 or no, SCC, that's what it was. Um, or SSC. I, I don't know. One of, one of those EVGA cards. Um, so originally it was a workstation for somebody. Um, all the parts were assembled brand new back in, I believe, 2013. And the computer was just run nonstop for the last five years. And she absolutely got her money out of it. Um, she made that computer work every day. I don't think it was really ever shut off other than updates. Um, and whenever she went on vacation, she would turn it off. But for the vast majority of the last five years, it's been running nonstop. Um, so I just replaced that with a water-cooled Ryzen 2600 build. Uh, when I say water-cooled, I do mean a custom loop, not just an AIO. Uh, so to help mitigate labor cost, she just gave me that computer. Because on its own, like I said in the beginning, um, it's really not worth anything in its current state with uh, the parts that are in it. You know, it's... 4 core 8 thread it's not really relevant for a workstation anymore we kind of moved away from quad core now we're in hexa and octa core workstations um they, they just work better and the pricing is still very viable but um most games most pc games can take advantage of four cores and hyper threading just gives it that that much more of an advantage and the ipc of the cpu is actually a little bit better than um second gen ryzen so even really old intel is still doing uh really really good in the gaming department so a friend of mine has an fx 4300 and what i could only assume to be um a seventh or a, a 700 series nvidia gpu the thing in there is just tiny i mean it it looks like a, about the size of a 1030 if you've ever seen one um it's just a tiny little thing and he plays games on it and as you can assume, it doesn't run very well. <laughs> so um, I, I built this 4790 system for him uh, with the GTX 970, and for 1080p gaming, it just it does awesome. And of course, I cleaned off the old components and put it in a somewhat modern case. It, I mean, it was a budget case, so it still kind of had that dated feel to it because it just had um, a lot of features and creature comforts missing that most uh, nicer modern cases have but it still worked really well it was still aesthetically pleasing uh, attempts were good i don't think attempts got above like 65 um which is pretty awesome so yeah compared to his current rig running an fx 4300 um just based off of what user benchmark says is about a 90 percent increase in performance <laughs> which is insane um and it has not quite gigabit Wi-Fi, but the card I put in there is capable of like 850 megabits, I think. So it will last a long time. And uh, yeah, I, I downloaded Ironside on there and played a little bit. And on 900p, which is what my test monitor is because it's so tiny, um, on 900p I was getting about 260 FPS <laughs> on Ultra. So I think uh, 1080p he'll be doing just fine. Um, so yeah, hopefully this video is helpful as far as disassembling a computer and cleaning everything. Um, yeah, if you liked it, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Um, subscribe so you don't miss any more of our future content. And we hope to see you at the next video.